Trump administration has agreed to deal with Taliban insurgents. It includes a timeline for a phased withdrawal of all U.S. troops and NATO troops from Afghanistan. Will this peace hold? And if not, what complications lie ahead for it? Will Goodwin, Director of Government Relations for VoteVets.org, joins me now from the nation's capital with his perspective. Will, thanks for being with us. What do you make of that deal? Thank you, Larry. It's great to be here with you. You know, at Vote Vets, we have long supported any efforts to bring a full withdrawal and end to the U.S. military presence in Afghanistan. As we saw in the Afghanistan papers released by the Washington Post this past fall, across administrations of both parties, Bush, Obama, and now Trump, some of the senior most military and civilian leaders in our country have decided to keep American troops in harm's way, even when they couldn't see a clear path to success or even define what success meant with our involvement in Afghanistan. Uh, you know, of course, this deal relies on a lot of moving parts. It relies on commitments from the Taliban, uh, requirements of the Afghan government, and we're gonna have to see how this deal holds. But the most important thing is a clear commitment from our leaders here in Washington, in both the executive branch and in Congress to finally bring an end to almost two decades of conflict in the Middle East and make sure that Americans who weren't even born on September 11th, 2001, are deploying to Afghanistan, which is where we stand today. In fact, uh, when I interviewed the first of two interviews with President Putin of Russia, he said, and I'll quote him exactly, I don't like to tell America what to do, but you're not gonna be able to get out of Afghanistan. Well, Larry, I, I think at this point, the American people are tired of the situation that we find ourselves in. Uh, and as we saw with this most recent debate in Congress over war powers uh, and the tensions with Iran that played out in Iraq, it's time for Congress to reassert its role uh, in American foreign policy, and it's time that the American people demanded that of their representatives. Uh, Pete Buttigieg put this best in his campaign and actually made this a point in debate after debate, that if America's men and women in uniform are gonna have the courage to go sacrifice and risk their lives in harm's way in a place like Afghanistan, then Congress should have the courage to vote on whether or not they should be there. And when there's no uh, clear path and there's no compelling U.S. national security interests that can be achieved by the use of the U.S. military. It's on Congress and it's on the president to bring them home. Do you think uh, this deal will increase President Trump's chances of a reelection? Oh, look, Larry, I mean, where we sit at VoteFest as an organization that deals in politics every day, um, the future of our involvement in Afghanistan is one of those issues that's beyond politics. Uh, it's the reason that I just told you we would support a deal like this, whether it was made under a Democrat or Republican administration. And it's an issue at Vote Vets where we've actually worked across the aisle with the Concerned Veterans for America, which is a conservative, uh, Republican-aligned veterans organization. But on this issue, uh, we see eye to eye that it is time for a full, clear withdrawal uh, from Afghanistan. Uh, are you supporting anyone in the Democratic primaries? Uh, no, not at this point, Larry. You know, we made the decision for the first time ever to get involved uh, this year and endorse Pete Buttigieg and his historic primary campaign. And we're so proud of Pete and Chastin and all of the staff and volunteers who really built a movement, something that was positive and forward focused. And we were proud to endorse him and make an impact in the primary. And one of the reasons that Pete was able to make such inroads and to win Iowa, come in a close second place in New Hampshire, was his service background um, and his ability to go talk to voters in all corners of the country because as a Navy veteran, he had served overseas in Afghanistan alongside people from all walks of life uh, and was able to work together to put country before party. It's a message that he carried into the campaign and I know he's gonna continue to carry it into the remainder of this primary. President Trump has portrayed himself as the champion of the U.S. military. Has he got a point? Uh, I don't think so, Larry. Uh, and that's because President Trump has himself been a threat to national security and has allowed chaos and confusion to reign at the highest levels of our national security apparatus, whether that's hollowing out the State Department um, and decreasing the role of American diplomacy on the world stage, 
or pardoning war criminals and trashing war heroes at the U.S. Uh, across the U.S. military, or take a look at the VA, where we have had political appointee battles at the highest level that have gotten in the way of veteran care. I think whoever the Democratic nominee is this November has a strong case to make that the Democratic Party is in a position of strength on national security and is best suited to care for our service members, veterans, and their families. Will Goodwin, always good to talk to you. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Larry.